USA wins. And we were just talking about this column that Yahoo put out saying it's time to blow this whole thing up. Get college kids in there. Get amateurs in there that people will wrap their arms around it a little more because right now the expectation is if Team USA doesn't win gold, it's a disappointment. What are your initial thoughts on hearing that? No way. The level of Olympic basketball is spectacular. Right now, you've got Slovenia and France. They're playing right now. It's the first quarter. Luca is playing spectacular. He had 10 points and five assists in the first quarter. They're beating the French. Just because the Americans are doing well, it doesn't mean it's not good basketball. The Australians played really well today for a while. Kevin Durant was just better. And, um, you know, if you don't want to see a guy like Kevin Durant play uh, in the Olympics, I don't know what to say to you. You, you, want the, you want the highest level of basketball. You want the countries, um, you, know, re, you know, sending their best, representing their best. You don't want to go backwards. I think it would be a terrible mistake. And quite frankly, college players are playing one year in college. So what's a college player? A college player is what? You yeah. happen to get him in that one year? So what? If, you, if, you, if you're not uh, 19 years old in an Olympic year, you can't play in the Olympics? Quite frankly, it's a ridiculous premise. We've already talked about it too much. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You, I couldn't have said it better myself, Wendy. But who would you rather see in the in the in the gold medal games? Would you rather see the rematch, or would you rather <laughs> see Luca versus this USA team? Man, listen, guys. If you wa watching the Slovenians play, it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy because everybody's double teaming Luca. Right? He scored 48 points in his first Olympic game a couple of weeks ago. So everybody's like, look, I'm not letting this dude put up 50 on us. Uh, we're going to shut him down. Well, every time you throw a double team, he's got a countermeasure. If you come from the right, he knows where to go to the left. If you come from behind him, he knows to go right. You know, he, 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 can, he knows where to throw a bounce pass. He knows where to throw a lob. He knows who's open at the three-point line. He knows who's open um, at the mid-range. I mean, he is like a surgeon out there. And the French, who are a really good team, are having difficulty handling it. He's eating them alive right now. Now, it's only the first quarter. He's eating them alive. And... I'm just going to say this. Luca is 17-0 and playing for Slovenia. And, okay, this is their first Olympics, but a couple of years ago when he was, like, 17, they won the Euro Championships, which is the hardest tournament outside the Olympics really to win. It's an absolute meat grinder. I would even say it's harder to win than the World Championships because there's no easy game. So um, playing 17-0 and Luca, which is 18-0, and I guess he would be if they win, I mean, that's, that would be incredible. Brian Windhorst joining us on the Goodyear Hotline. He, of course, is our ESPN NBA insider. If you're wondering what that game looks like right now, Slovenia and France are currently tied in the other semifinal. Uh, the winner of that game will take on the USA squad in the gold medal match. All right, let's go back stateside, Brian, because obviously a flurry of free agency moves over the last few days. And we're really interested in the, the battle in the East. The Heat have bolstered their roster in, in a very short time. Where do you think they rank now amongst the teams in the East? Yeah, I mean, I think they're obviously right there. I mean, it's hard to look at Milwaukee and Brooklyn and say that the Heat are neck and neck with them. Uh, they've made some really good moves, and they're going to be rugged defensively. I mean, we're in an era mm -hmm. right now on offense where it's just total gas. I mean, if you look at what the Bulls are doing, the Bulls have assembled a team that is basically all offense. I mean, Lonzo Ball defends a little bit, but that is a straight offensive team. And then you look at the Heat, and you look at P.J. Tucker – and Jimmy Butler, and Kyle Lowry. These are guys who are going to knock you around and bruise you on defense. So they're going a different direction. But I will say that I think a key for the Heat is Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero had a spectacular rookie season, was awesome for them in the bubble. They made the finals. Last year he had a sophomore slump. And so they need that differentiating uh, talent in Hero. I mean, it's obviously not all going to be on him, but if he can elevate his game and become the – you know, the borderline all-star that he showed as a rookie, that would be a huge difference maker for them. Now, you know, yesterday LeBron was in his feelings again. He was talking about all the dollars and talking about <laughs> keeping that same energy. <laughs> but then he took it down. You know, what do you think are, are any of the concerns about the age of the roster? Are they warranted or are they just hot, hot, hot gas? You know, I'm not worried about the age of the roster. I mean, you know, some of these guys actually fit pretty well. And by the way, they signed three guys in their 20s. So, I mean, it's their, I mean, I know they're old, but they do have some young guys. I'm concerned about their defense because the thing about it is, as much as we talk about Anthony Davis and LeBron, and obviously those guys are the drivers, but the Lakers have been a great defensive team. They were a great defensive team when they won the title. They were a great defensive team last year when they were a high seed before uh, LeBron and AD got hurt. And 
they've basically flushed that roster. And, and most of the guys they have brought in are not known for their defense. Certainly Russell Westbrook is not. Certainly Carmelo Anthony is not. And so this is really going to be on, you know, AD and LeBron to defend their positions well because they're going to have to play bigger with the way this team is designed, and it's on Frank Vogel. It's a lot of pressure to see if his defensive system can hold up with less talented defensive players. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.